Hello friends, today we will discuss intercostal nerve block by landmark technique and by ultrasound guided technique. This is my introduction. The objective of this presentation are to discuss relevant anatomy of the intercostal nerves, preoperative assessment and preparations, indications and contraindications of intercostal nerve block, complication and side effect of intercostal nerve block, prerequisite of the block, equipment and logistic required, ultrasound setting of the block, making position for intercostal nerve block, conduct of the intercostal nerve block, intraoperative care, postoperative care and clinical tips. Relevant anatomy of the intercostal nerve. Formation of the intercostal nerves. Thoracic 1 to 12 sensory and motor nerve root in the spinal cord. When they come out of the spinal cord, they unite and form a mixed spinal nerve trunk, which emerges from the intervertebral foramen. Thoracic mixed spinal nerve then divides into dorsal and ventral rami. Dorsal rami provides innervation to the skin and muscles of the paravertebral region. The ventral thoracic rami continue laterally as intercostal nerves. Each intercostal nerve enters the corresponding intercostal space between the posterior intercostal membrane and the parietal pleura. The intercostal nerve at this point are external to the parietal pleura and then dives into the subcostal groove of its associated rib. In its course through the subcostal groove, the intercostal nerve is bounded by innermost intercostal muscle and internal intercostal muscle. At mid-axillary area, intercostal nerve gives lateral cutaneous branch and innervates intercostal muscles. The main intercostal nerve travels anterior to the chest as anterior cutaneous branch. Upper six intercostal nerve innervates chest wall and skin and the lower six intercostal nerve innervates abdomen wall and skin. So from T1 to T12, thoracic 1st to thoracic 12, thorax and abdomen are supplied by the thoracic nerves. And this is the diagram showing formation of intercostal nerves from ventral rami. You can see clearly the spinal nerve root arising from the ventral heart and dorsal heart and uniting outside the spinal cord as main trunk of the thorax. This main trunk of spinal nerve, which is a mixed nerve, divides into dorsal, which run posteriorly, and ventral, and that we call it as a intercostal nerve. This is a diagram showing typical spinal nerve and its branches. You can see clearly after formation of mixed spinal nerve, it comes through the intervertebral foramina and gives dorsal ramus, which run posteriorly, and ventral ramus, which runs anteriorly, as intercostal nerve and gives branches, lateral cutaneous nerve branch and anterior cutaneous nerve branch. This is the diagram showing branches and relation of intercostal nerve with intercostal muscle. In this diagram, we can see the green intercostal nerve runs between the internal intercostal muscle and innermost intercostal muscle. This is a diagram showing vertical section of thorax, showing arrangement of muscles, blood vessels and nerves between two ribs. Categories of intercostal nerves. There are three categories of intercostal nerve. Number one, typical intercostal nerve. Number two, atypical intercostal nerves. And number three is subcostal nerve. Typical intercostal nerve include third intercostal, fourth intercostal, fifth intercostal, and sixth intercostal. These are four nerves which are confined to the intercostal space, and they never go out of their space. The atypical intercostal nerves are first intercostal, second intercostal, which supply to the upper limb because first intercostal nerve is the part of brachial plexus, supplies the arm. The second intercostal nerve is also known as intercostal brachial nerve that supplies the floor of the axilla. Then we have other five intercostal nerves from 7 to 11. They travel through the intercostal space and then pass out of the space and supply abdomen. Third category is subcostal nerve, which is not a real intercostal nerve because there is no intercostal space because it lies below 12th rib. Branches of the intercostal nerve. There are five branches from the typical intercostal nerves. Number one is rami communicants, the muscular branches, the collateral branches, the lateral cutaneous branch, and the anterior cutaneous branch. The rami communicants carry visceral signal to and from the corresponding thoracic ganglia by gray and white rami because thoracolumbar outflow runs in the thorax and these 12 nerves are part of the thoracolumbar outflow white and gray rami communicates the muscular branches to all intercostal muscles as well as serratus posterior superior subcostal muscle transverse thoracic muscle and levator castora muscle the collateral branch innervates the intercostal muscles parietal pyluri and articular branches which innervate periosteum 
The lateral cutaneous branch goes through the muscles of the lateral thoracic wall and divides into anterior and posterior branches to return sensation from the skin of the lateral thoracic wall. The anterior cutaneous branch is the terminal branch of the typical intercostal nerve and divides into medial and lateral branches to supply sensory innervation to the skin of the anterior thoracic wall. Uh, branches of the atypical intercostal nerve first intercostal second intercostal and from 7 to 11 intercostal nerve run a more complicated course and have their own routes to innervate in the human body the first intercostal nerve gives contribution to the brachial plexus first intercostal legs both lateral and anterior cutaneous branches seen in typical intercostal nerve second intercostal nerve has a branch named as intercostal brachial nerve and this branch returns cutaneous information from floor of the axilla and superior region of the upper extremity. In coronary artery disease, the cardiac pain that some patients describe on the medial side of the arm is due to intercostal brachial nerve. 7th intercostal nerve to 11th intercostal nerve, these fire nerves travel in the intercostal space and then travel into the abdominal wall, supplying external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominal muscle and rectus abdominal muscle. These are all four muscles supplied by these nerves. They also innervate the skin and parietal peritoneum. Intercostal 12th nerve is subcostal. This is a diagram showing cutaneous supply of the thoracic ventral and dorsal rami. This is a diagram showing the area innervated by dorsal rami. Preoperative assessment and preparation are done as routine. That is, after introduction, we take history, do physical general examination, we request for labs, we do risk assessment and ASA grading of the patient, we optimize comorbids and prepare patient for procedure. We take written informed consent, we confirm nil per os, we do side marking in holding area. Indications of intercostal nerve block. Indications of uh, intercostal nerve block include rib fractures and chest wall trauma, thoracic surgery pain like uh, thoracotomy, thoracoscopy, chest strain, and breast surgery. Abdominal surgery like cholecystectomy and gastrostomy pain can be relieved by intercostal nerve block. Neurolytic intercostal nerve block is used for chronic pain condition like postmastectomy pain of second thoracic intercostal nerve and chronic post thoracotomy pain. Herpes zoster or post herpetic neuralgia is another indication of intercostal nerve block. We also use intercostal block for differentiating visceral and somatic pain. Another indication of intercostal nerve block are diagnostic block before neurolytic block, cryoablation, radiofrequency ablation, and chemical neurolysis. Eighth indication of intercostal nerve block is chest wall tumors, nerve entrapment, and intercostal neuralgia. Contraindication of intercostal nerve block are routine like uh, patient refusal, inflammation or infection over injection site, allergy to local anesthetic drugs. Relative contraindication may be patient on anticoagulant or patient with bleeding disorders. Complication of intercostal nerve block include pneumothorax. The incidence is about 1% and uh, local anesthetic systemic toxicity last. Intravenous injection can occur, culminating in local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Introduction of infection, which needs sterile technique. If we puncture the artery during the procedure, it can cause hemorrhage, bruising, and hematoma. Partial and failed block can occur. Another complication is allergy to local anesthetic drug. In paraspinous approach, local anesthetic can reach paravertebral space. Abdominal viscera are at risk of penetration in lower intercostal nerve block. Rarely spine spread can occur because dural sleeves extend up to 8 cm from the spine. This is a mnemonic showing the incidence of absorption from the space. You can see the highest incidence from the topmost area from where the local anesthetic drug is absorbed the intercostal space. And then cardal and paravertebral cervical injection, then epidural and then perivascular vertical plexus block, sciatic, spinal and subcutaneous infiltration. So we must be careful by injecting appropriate dose of the drug. We should not exceed the therapeutic doses. Requisite of intercostal nerve block. Block is executed in an area designated for regional block. All facilities of general anesthesia must be available in this area. All resuscitation drugs must be in hand, including lipid solution. We need all standard monitors to be attached. We need bright light source. We need 18 gauge working intravenous access. We need trained assistant for ultrasound guided regional anesthesia. A sterile technique must be used. 
equipment and logistics required for the block. We need an ultrasound machine with linear probe. We need a sterile gel, a sterile probe cover, a sterile gloves, a sterile towel to isolate the block area and a sterile cleansing solution. Local anesthetic volume required for the each nerve is 3 to 5 ml per nerve. A safe dose should be calculated based on weight of the patient. A 22 gauge insulated blunt bevel echogenic needle 50 mm long is required. We need sedative, analgesic, midazolam, fentanyl, and ketamine. So we need facilities to convert patient to general anesthesia if required. Ultrasound setting. Adjustment and gain, focus, and depth ETC are made before procedure. We put ultrasound machine on control at the side in front of our eyes. Color Doppler can be used to avoid intravascular injection. We use in-plane ultrasound guided technique. Out-of-plane technique is usually used in landmark technique. Depth setting will be minimum 2 to 3 centimeters. Making position for intercostal nerve block. The intercostal nerve must be blocked proximal to the mid axillary line before it gives lateral cutaneous branch, that is, at posterior axillary line or even proximal to the posterior axillary line 6 centimeters lateral to the spine. There are various positions for intercostal nerve block, could be sitting, prone, and lateral according to the requirement of the block. Lateral position is preferred for posterior axillary line intercostal nerve block. In children, posterior axillary line intercostal block is commonly practiced. In adults, intercostal nerve block is done at angle of rib, 6 to 8 cm away from the spine. For higher intercostal nerve block, prone position is preferred due to shoulder, which obstructs the posterior axillary line. Prone or sitting position is preferred for paraspinous intercostal nerve block. In prone position, scapula hinders access to the angle of the rib, but modified prone position with arm hanging down, the table is used to drag scapula away from the spine. Alternatively, hand move to control at the shoulder, pull shoulder away from spine. This technique can be used in sitting position. This is a diagram showing anterior axillary line, mid axillary line, and posterior axillary line. Intercostal block is done in posterior axillary line, but in higher block, the shoulder and the musculature obstruct the space. This is a diagram showing lateral position for intercostal nerve block. This is a diagram showing modified prone position for intercostal nerve block. The hand is hanging down the table to drag away the scapula from intercostal spaces. I am showing sitting position for paraspinous intercostal nerve block. This is a diagram showing from first thoracic to toilet thoracic intercostal nerve can be blocked by paraspinous intercostal technique. Conduct of the intercostal nerve block. There are two techniques, landmark technique, which we say is a rib walker technique. And then we will discuss the ultrasound guided. In landmark technique, we do sign in and sight marking in preoperative holding area. Patient is kept in prone position, lateral or sitting according to the need. Intercostal nerve to be blocked or marked and one intercostal nerve above the block and one intercostal nerve below the required space because there is a overlap and it can cause into partial or fade block. We displace the skin up near lower border of the rib by index finger. Angle of the needle should be 20 degree kephalate to skin to reach the rib. The needle touches the rib and then we move the skin down and walk on the rib to reach the intercostal space. This is a very shallow block, means under the skin, not too far. We insert needle around 2.5 to 5 millimeter or 2.5 to 3 millimeter is enough. Sometimes maybe 5 millimeter in intercostal space near lower border of the rib. Single skin entry is practiced in the walker technique. 3 to 5 ml of local anesthetic solution is injected after aspiration. Note the maximum distance between the skin and pleura is 8 mm. We should take care. We should not go inside more. There are high chances of pneumothorax. This is a diagram showing rib walker technique. Conduct of ultrasound guided technique. We make position lateral setting or prone as per need of the ultrasound intercostal nerve block. We use the sterile preparation of the area and isolate area with towels. We put linear ultrasound probe parasagitally to view the hyperechoic ribs. Optimize image, adjusting depth, gain and frequency setting. An in-plane approach is usually used from caudal to cephalad. Out of plane may be used with a 20 degree cephalad. External intercostal and internal intercostal muscle, both are peers. Local anesthesia solution is deposited between internal intercostal muscle and innermost intercostal muscles. 
3 to 5 ml of local anesthetic solution is injected after aspiration for each nerve. It can be seen that the pleura is pushed away after injection. Hydro dissection is the key to success. It should be done in every layer of the space to identify tip of the needle and avoid pneumothorax. This is a diagram showing the ultrasound guided technique moving from down to up, cardal to cephalite to the intercostal nerve. This is a diagram showing ultrasound technique of intercostal nerve block. Intraoperative care. We brief all detail of block to the patient before starting procedure. We apply full standard monitoring as for GA throughout the procedure. We avoid hypothermia and use full body bear huggers. And pseudoanalgesia can be given, but better after confirmation of the block. Pseudoanalgesia can mark signs of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We monitor for the signs of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Alternatively, we maintain verbal communication to the patient to identify local anesthetic systemic toxicity. There is highest incidence of local anesthetic absorption from intercostal space, as we discussed before, due to higher blood flow to the intercostal space. We keep in hand lipid emulsion in OR and recovery. If in case any local anesthetic system of toxicity occurs, we can manage. Post-operative care. We gently shift the patient to post-anesthesia care unit after finishing the surgery. We apply standard monitor and we avoid hypothermia by active warming. Monitor for local anesthetic system toxicity. Documentation required in every patient record, in this case also, that is positioning of the patient during vlog. Technique shoes, either it was in plane or out of plane, we should mention in the documents. Puncture side analgesia used or not, how much volume we use, how much concentration we use, and how much total dose of local anesthetic we use, it should be documented. What is the name of local anesthetic drug we use? And we must mention negative aspiration done Intercostal nerves are usually not visible on sonography. For ultrasound, it helps to identify the ribs, lower border of the ribs, or two ribs, and the muscles are easily visible. We attach syringe to the needle to avoid air drying in case of pleural rent. We advance needle only when full needle is visible with bevel cut, or we do hydro dissect each layer so that each layer and needle tip is visualized for correct placement and to avoid pneumothorax. Target area of deposition of local anesthetic solution is 2 to 3 mm deep, maximum 5 mm in obese patient. Total distance from skin to pleura is 8 mm, which is very shallow, uh, even not 1 cm. The incidence of pleural puncture is 1 person. Blockage of one level above and one level below is always required. Intercostal block has the highest serum peak levels of local anesthetic and there are high chances of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We should never, never exceed the therapeutic dose. Avoid intravascular injection by aspiration each time we inject. Local anesthetic inject in subcostal groove will spread distally and proximally. Some injected may reach paravertebral space and intradural space.